So according to Denise Browning of Heritage.org, free trade policies have created a level of competition in today's open market that engenders continual innovation and leads to better products, better paying jobs, new markets, and increased savings and investment. Free trade enables more goods and services to reach American consumers at lower prices, thereby substantially increasing their standard of living. And according to U.S. Trade Representative, U.S. exports support over 12 million jobs in America and trade-related jobs pay an average of 13% to 16% higher wages than do non-trade-related jobs. The nature of employment in the United States is indeed involving away from manufacturing and toward more service-oriented and high-technology jobs. However, the record shows that trading freely with America's NAFTA partners, Canada, and Mexico has not resulted, resulted in an aggregate loss of manufacturing jobs. Instead, since 1994, 14 million new American jobs have been reported. The unemployment rate in America has fallen from 6% to 3.9%. The number of manufacturing jobs in America has, re has remained steady, employing 18.3 million people in 1994 and 18.4 million in 1999, which represents 14% of the total American workforce. On balance, not only has NAFTA not resulted in a loss of factory jobs in the United States, but it has also not led to a loss in real wages for manufacturing workers. The average real wage in the manufacturing sector rose from $8.03 per hour in 1994 to $8.26 per hour in 1999. So the benefit number one of free trade is that it promotes innovation and competition. Few people in America today sell all their own clothes, grow all their own food, build their own houses, or buy only products made in their own state. It would cost too much and take too much time, especially since Americans can acquire such items on the open market with relative ease. The same principle of practicality and cost applies on an international scale. It makes economic sense to buy a product from, a, from another who specializes in such production or who can make it more easily or, or for less cost. Free trade is the only type of truly fair trade because it offers consumers the most choices and the best opportunities to improve their standard of living. It fosters competition, sparing companies to innovate and develop better products and to bring more of their goods and services to market, keeping prices low and quality high in order to retain or increase their market share. So, according to Bill Real, what drawing from NAFTA has already been proposed. So, it was introduced in the 111th Congress for the United States to withdraw from NAFTA. The bill would have required the president to give written notice to Mexico and Canada of the U.S. withdrawal, which would occur six months after the bill's enactment. The bill had 27 co-sponsors and was referred to the House Ways and Means Committee. The reason why the proposal hasn't passed is because NAFTA has had incredible successes in all three countries of North America and that withdrawing from NAFTA would cause job losses in the United States to increase and that U.S. exports to Mexico would be sharply impacted. They point to the losses in exports that have already occurred from Mexico's retaliatory, retaliatory tariffs due to the trucking dispute and those exports represent only a small percentage of, to, of total U.S. exports to Mexico. And according to David Williams, NAFTA has been so good for Mexico that fully 20% of its GDP is now attributable to trade made possible by NAFTA provisions. NAFTA has benefited the Mexican rural as well as urban workforce by creating thousands of new higher paying export manufacturing jobs. Government of Mexico data indicate that poverty rates in both rural and urban areas have dropped since the economic recovery in 1996. <clears throat> A key lesson to be learned from NAFTA is that free trade will likely accelerate the economic transition to manufacturing and competitive sectors as resources are allocated more efficiently.